obviously, when we were mentioned, um, it was a shock to us. I mean, we are uh, an old organization. We didn't just happen. We're in the UK for over 20 years. We've been established in 1997. We've been working alongside many uh, decision makers, organizations, parliamentarians. So, so for us to uh, face such an allegation is quite ridiculous and, and dangerous at the same time. Uh, I think um, the leaks that were drip fed to us through media, um, uh, just it was uh, unreal, actually. And we had to sit with other organizations, as you said, as some of them have been named uh, to see what can be done and how can this uh, nonsense uh, be challenged. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to, to be done, and we are in the process of trying to think and weigh all the, the, the implications of, of, of such a thing. I mean, at the end of the day, um, what he did, uh, what we were told that he, he's going to announce us as extremist organizations, but what he ended up doing is the, the assessing whether these organizations, but he knows that the damage is already done. Once you label an organize, uh, organization such as MAB, MEN, CAGE, and categorize them in a, a category with neo-Nazi uh, organizations, that's quite a dangerous thing to do. We are an organization that have been working with youth. We've uh, work, been working with uh, women. We've uh, been working with politicians. I myself, personally, as the chair of MAB, Muslim Association of Britain, I have been invited to many occasions and events in uh, the House of, uh, of Commons and in the Parliament. So basically, what he is, what he has done is um, demonized and attacked Muslim organizations, mainstream Muslim organizations, for the sake to appease the far right, especially during a time very close to elections as well. And I think this is clearly a threat to not only, um, um, you know, Muslim organizations, but truly to the cohesion of the British society in general. We believe, in, and we, I'm sure you've uh, seen some some statements coming out from the Archbishop of Counter Canterbury and uh, York, uh, warning that this is quite divisive and it's disproportionately attacked Muslims. So I, I don't think you need, uh, uh, you need intelligence to see how this is ripping us apart. And me as a Muslim woman, um, who's been celebrated in the British media back in 2020 when I became the first uh, Muslim, uh, female president for a mainstream British uh, Muslim organization. Um, to face all this kind of labeling and attacking and demonizing after all the work that we have been engaging in is, is quite disappointing uh, at its least. So, um, of course, there's many reactions. We've given many interviews yesterday. It was a very busy day. I think many organizations are, have shown support. We've received letters right, left and center from Muslims and non-Muslim organizations saying we are ready to donate to you. We are supporting your work. We're people who worked with you. Someone contacted us who worked with us on the first, in, on one of the largest uh, demonstrations back in 2003, when we uh, mobilized the two million uh, uh, man um, protest against the war in Iraq. And he got in touch and he said, I know you and I've worked with you and I am ready to do anything you need. And, and, and that shows the, the depth of our connections, the depth of our networks with individuals, organizations, decision makers, centers. Um, and for us to be demonized in that way, and from who? From a person who's been stirring uh, anti-Muslim hatred uh, for quite a while and continues to do so is quite telling of the kind of government that unfortunately is ruling at the moment. And it's quite a dangerous um, thing to be to, to have done. I mean, in general, but to 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 to, to do it now while they are, you know, uh, they show signs of Islamophobia. They have ties with a racist who clearly declared that he would shoot the first black uh, uh, woman MP um, and, and still be reluctant in cutting those ties. There's many, many, um, you know, stigmas that the Conservative Party, the ruling party, the government is suffering from. So as a detour, as, uh, you know, deterring the attention far away from it, 
to attack organizations that have been doing nothing but ensuring the engagements of our youth, our, of our communities in the mainstream, uh, in the democratic uh, system that uh, all uh, politicians have called us as a Muslim community to engage in is quite ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So the UK, like a democracy, is the place of the parliament and all the history with it is um, um, normally the place for everyone or the communities. What, do you think that um, these comments can be labeled as Islamophobic? And why do you think the reason these comments are coming out now in this specific time? I mean, you, you know, Mariam, that we have been part of a coalition of mobilizing protests. Millions over the past few months have been marching in the in the capital of uh, of, of uh, in the capital London, uh, asking for the end uh, and for a ceasefire, to, for the end of this genocide and for a ceasefire. And uh, Muslim Association of Britain has been part of this coalition and has been mobilizing its members and members from the British society and enabling them to make their voices heard through those protests. And obviously this is annoying as we have seen from the former um, Home Secretary Suella Braverman who tried to call us and label us as hate marchers. And it's, it's ridiculous that people who are marching to end a genocide, to call for a ceasefire, to stop a war are called hate marchers and uh, violent people. And those people who are funding, using our taxes in funding this genocide are the people who are calling, the, calling us that. It, it's 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 sad. It's a sad state that we find ourselves, unfortunately, um, uh, having to face. And uh, we, uh, I don't think people need convincing who is right and who is wrong. But unfortunately, media, power, funding, money, it plays a great deal in uh, brainwashing people, unfortunately. And we've seen it time and time again. People are misinformed. People are, um, the, the you know, uh, out of fear, out of scaremongering that the, the government is definitely doing. And yes, definitely practicing Islamophobia by, by pointing fingers at a um, uh, uh, powerful mainstream Muslim organization that many Muslims came across, many platforms we've been on, many engagements with Muslims and non-Muslim organizations. So definitely what they're doing is dangerous, is a threat to our democracy, is a threat, as I said, to the fabric of the British society that we have been building together for a long time. Faith groups, non-faith groups, um, uh, trying to 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 apply what we believe in that Muslims is um, an essential part of this fabric, and what we want to do is to be part of building a fair and prosperous Britain. When the the government turns uh, around and demonise us and attack us in that way, it's quite telling about their fears and what they want to stop. And it is uh, it sends the message for any Islamophobe or racist to leash, uh, lash out and, and, and make it okay, give it a green light.